Hello, and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about what happens when you pivot. So I'm gonna to talk to you about three things. Number one, the aftermath of my previous decision. Number two, now what? And number three, then what? So let me real quick, a little bit about me in case you're new to my channel. I'm Leanne Heron. I am a full-time certified personal development coach and the proud owner of Finding Resilience with Leanne and Kink Your Way. I am also the creator and host of the Happiness on Tap podcast and the Kink Your Way podcast. My passion lies in advocating for personal growth, empowerment, and living life to its fullest potential. I believe in the transformative power of mindset and self-discovery, and I'm dedicated to helping individuals unlock their true potential and create a life they love. My areas of expertise include mindset mastery, self-love, goal setting, and creating a life of purpose and fulfillment. Through my coaching programs, workshops, and podcasts, I guide individuals on a transformative journey of self-discovery, helping them to tap into their strengths, passions, and unique gifts. So let's get started. I wanna talk first about the aftermath of my decision. What was my decision? Farm the land you own, reduce my social media distractions, and focus on only posting value that brings people to my website and my YouTube channels. So here's what happened. On March 11th, I posted my first business series video, Major Business Decisions by a Small Business Entrepreneur. And I followed that up with blogs on both of my channels as well. I was super excited about what I had gotten done that day I had gotten out of my comfort zone. I had made a decision that had been a long time coming. I decided that I needed to pivot away from social media to YouTube video. Now I have two podcasts and I was finally comfortable with being on camera, but I still hadn't done any videos where it was just me talking to the camera and to you guys and not doing an interview. So, you know, I knew it was time. It was a decision I had to make. Well, guess what? I did it and I survived. And not only that I survived, I was proud of myself. It in increased my confidence. I, you know, I was so excited. As soon as my husband got home, I wanted to share with him all about it. And so we were, you know, we had just finished dinner. We were sitting and chatting about what I had done. And all of a sudden my cell phone started chiming and I had text messages coming in from family members and friends from other states telling me that my Facebook had been hacked. And, you know, they were getting friend requests. And I was like, what the hell? So I got up, jumped on my computer, and changed all my passwords on my Facebook and my Instagram and, you know, got on there and did a post saying, you know, I'm sorry, I was hacked. If you get a friend request from me, don't accept it. Unfriend it, report it, but don't accept it. It's not me. I had already gotten on and posted that I was going to be getting off of social media or dramatically reducing my social media time. You know, then here I was again, under all this drama, under all this stress, trying to deal with, you know, my system being hacked and what do I do now? You know what, I'm done. I made the decision. I just decided, you know what, this was more stress than I needed. It wasn't worth it. And I was just going to get off social media. So I let myself calm down for a little bit. I got on, I did a post and I let my followers know that I was going to give it till the next morning and I was going to delete my social media platforms. Let people know, you know, if you want to continue following me, great. I would love it. Please just head over to my website and subscribe to my website. That way you'll be kept up to date every time I post a video. 
uh, my email marketing, everything. So I got up the next morning and thought, okay, that's it. I'm just going to get on and I'm going to shut it down. Well, let me tell you, that was harder than I anticipated because I had, you know, my, my personal Facebook page, which was connected to both of my business pages. So trying to delete, trying to even find where to delete was work. I had to watch YouTube videos and I had to poke around and I finally found it. But then they give you an option. You can either deactivate so that you can reactivate at a later time when you decide to come back or delete. But either way, it was a 30 day wait. So I deleted because I have no intention of returning to social media. Um, let me tell you, I realized real quick that I didn't miss it. Not at all. So I marked my accounts to delete. It gave me a notification that it was in the process, but that it would take 30 days. So for those 30 days, my accounts are still active. They're still sitting there. People can still see them. At the same time, my hacker is still causing problems. But that's another story. That is not my problem. I, you know, I immediately deleted and uninstalled Facebook, Instagram, threads. They're off my phone. They're off my computer. I'm the kind of person, if I don't see it, meh, I don't miss it. I'm good. So, you know, at that point, now here I am. So now what? So on to number two, now what? You know, I went to work on my website. I spent time looking at each page. I considered my keywords. I deleted sections. I removed my social media links and any pages that were specific on my website to my Facebook pages. I actually had created a, a Facebook private group, which I'd like to talk about just briefly because it was a lesson learned. Um, I had created what was called a positive impact small business referral community in Facebook. And I put in a lot of work. I, you know, it grew really quickly. I sent out invitations to my entrepreneur people because that was who I wanted in my group. I had, you know, big hopes and big dreams that this group was going to connect people with each other not only for referral partners, but in the community. You know, we can learn from each other, we can support each other um, because it was something that I did and it was important to me. And I had hoped that leading by example and connecting these people wasn't just me, you know, spending all my time on social media, supporting my friends and their businesses, that other people would start to do the same. Well, unfortunately, I was wrong. Um, you know, and this is this is on me. This is not on anybody. I'm not upset with anybody. Um, I had expectations of what I thought this community could be. Um, and it didn't happen. You know, if people got on the community Facebook page, they would jump on, they would post whatever event they had coming up, and then they would bounce out. They weren't posting anything else. They weren't contributing to the community. They weren't following up with any other community members. They weren't making any attempts to support anybody else. It was just about them. And so I was really sad. I was sad that it wasn't working. I was sad that I put in so much time, but it really was just on me. And I was mourning my expectation of what I thought this community could be. Anyway, you know, no Facebook, no Facebook groups. I don't need this information on my website anymore. I deleted those pages um, and I'm okay with that. Um, like I said, it was a lesson learned. Um, not saying I won't ever do another community, but it was a lesson learned on myself and my expectations of others. So the next thing I focused on was my newsletters. Like the whole purpose of newsletters and email marketing is that I get to connect, provide value to the people who are choosing to subscribe to my website. 
And that's very different from Facebook followers or Instagram followers. These are subscribers. These are people who have made a conscious decision to choose to follow me. And so I hope that I am providing value. Um, and so I started focusing on my newsletters. And the big thing about that was that it forced me because I had all this extra time that I wasn't playing on Facebook or Instagram and supporting everybody else to really focus on how I wanted to provide value to my subscribers. So again, I pivoted. I pivoted my focus to my email list. I created a weekly newsletter. The newsletter is called Health Harmony, Your Weekly Wellness Guide. Um, and so in this weekly newsletter, I include health and wellness tips, success stories, and ask the coach question where anybody can reach out to me via email, ask me questions, and then I'll be happy to you know, respond to those questions and share those answers on the next email or, you know, however that works. Um, it'll also include mindful moments and books or podcast recommendations. And so I have really enjoyed this. Um, I created uh, five newsletters off the bat. I scheduled each one for every Tuesday for the next five weeks. Um, so now, you know, those things are done when I have time, I can create more, but right now for the next five weeks, I've created those emails and I can move on to other things. I can move on to this creating videos. I can, you know, move on to blogs or, or other things that, you know, also need my time. So, you know, please, if you're interested, make sure you subscribe to my website, Finding Resilience with Leanne, so you can receive a weekly dose of re resilience straight to your inbox. I'm really enjoying these newsletters, and each one I do, I get more excited about the next one. Um, that is until I run out of ideas, which I hope that'll never happen, because I'm really enjoying this. So, you know, I'm focusing on my content calendar. Now I'm ahead of the game. So let's focus on other things. So yesterday, I woke up a little under the weather. I had a bit of a headache. We have kind of a weird storm system going on here. And so I decided not to do my workout. And I laid down on the couch and cuddled up in my blanket and decided to listen to some podcast episodes. And I listened to one that was very specific to SEO for beginners. Um, let me just remind you, you know, my background was in accounting and legal. I didn't even know what SEO was, what it could do, what it meant, how to use it. How, you know, I, I just didn't know. And so, you know, it wasn't my first podcast episode or class on SEO, because I feel I can always learn something new from somebody else and technology is ever changing. So now with AI there, you know, there's more going on. So I want to continue to be a lifetime learner and continue to focus on getting more education so that I can share it with you. Because that is one of my goals of this business series is that I can share this information with you either as I'm learning it or as a special blog or a special video that just talks about things like SEO or just other things in the business realm. So I watched this video and it didn't specifically talk about what I'm going to talk about, but it gave me a lot of food for thought. And so I started thinking about, you know, keywords, keywords on my website. Oh, and keywords on my Google business profile. As an entrepreneur, as a business in a brick and mortar foundation, um, I do qualify for a business Google profile. Not everybody qualifies for one. But it's worth looking into if you don't have one, because let me tell you, it is amazing. And it's so easy to maintain. And when I share a blog, I can share it to Google and it's 
right away in my Google profile and people can see them as I add them. So what I learned was that within your Google profile, there is a place where you can add and update your services. You can also add and update your products. And I've been really pretty good about keeping my new digital products up to date. As I create them, I add them. Um, but I really wasn't looking at my services. I knew that they were in there, but it just wasn't something that, you know, I thought I needed to change or update or whatever. So I jumped on the services tab and I looked at the services that I have. And of course, of course, life coach is my primary service. And underneath that, I had other services like health coach, um, wellness coach, um, money coach, career coach. Um, but they all didn't have descriptions. And again, just like everything else, I have pivoted. You know, I've pivoted away from just being a health coach or a life coach to also include certified health coach, certified life coach. I've done the work. I earn the credit. I earn the degree. I might as well make sure that people are aware that I am certified and what that means. And so I added a bunch of new descriptions and new services like certified personal development coach, personal development coach, and a bunch of others. I literally, you know, spent a good portion of my day yesterday going through my website and adding those services for the things that I offer. My women's circle, uh, my holistic uh, practices like chakra balancing. So these were all things that I didn't have on there that I could add, but I also at that time realized that there is a button within services as you're adding that you can add a custom service. Well, that was it, that was the magic. I started adding all of my services as custom services so that they said exactly what I wanted them to say, which those keywords then match up now with my website. So, then I wanted to see like, what does that mean? What did that do? What did that change? Um, and on the Google business platform, it will tell you that your edits are under review and then it may take up to a day. Um, but what I was finding was it was literally taking minutes. I would click save, I would move on, I would add the next one. By the time I got done adding two or three, they were already starting to be approved. And it will let you know if you're, edits are approved or not approved. Um, but all of my edits, and I made many, they were all approved and accepted by Google. So now when you search my business, my Finding Resilience with Leanne, you can go into my services tab and it lists all those services with descriptions, which I think is very valuable to the people who are looking for a certified life coach. And what does that even mean? Not everybody knows what a life coach does um, versus a therapist. So, you know, I was very specific in my descriptions. And then, so I would exit out and then go back in to Google and search certified personal development coach near me or personal development coach. And as soon as I would hit enter and it would start to populate, I noticed that my rankings were moving up and up and up and up and up. And most of the time they were now at number one instead of number five or number eight or three pages in, they were all coming up as number one. And that service that I specified was sitting in bold right underneath my business description. So it, Google was seeing what I was doing and I was creating that SEO for my business to make my business more searchable. So again, this is one of those things that I, you know, as I learn it, as I develop it, 
I want to share it with others. And that's what this business series is going to be about. I'm going to try to do things like that to keep you all up to date. In fact, today, let me give you one last thing that I didn't have added on my things that I wanted to discuss with you all. But today I started receiving uh, email messages on my business email addresses from a SEO marketer who had looked at my first videos on both of my websites um, and sent me an email with it all marked up and read and circled and you're missing this and you're missing that. And let me tell you how I can fix your videos. Um, and normally I will just respond with, no, thank you, not interested, please remove me. But this time I really looked at it. I blew it up. I, I looked at the things that were circled and highlighted and things that were checked off like, yes, she did this. Yes, she did this. No, she didn't do this. No, she didn't do this. And what did those things mean? And one of the things that stuck out to me was that it showed that I didn't have any chapters specified in my videos. Well, here is my lack of knowledge and I'm still getting educated, but all of my videos have timestamps. Um, I thought that timestamps and chapters were the same thing. They are not, but they can be. So I watched the video. It was literally, you know, I, I jumped on YouTube. I searched what's the difference between timestamps and chapters in YouTube videos. Watched a four minute video, learned how to do it. It was a super easy fix. Um, and I went through all of my videos on my kink your way platform and I made those changes. I changed my timestamps to chapters, saved them, went back, looked at the videos. Sure enough, within seconds, the minute you click save, those chapters are now on my videos. And so I, I'm one of those people that if I learn something, I put it into practice. And so, you know, I wanted to share that with you all because that was something I learned today that was very valuable to me. And it is something that this afternoon, I will probably spend the rest of the day going through my happiness on tap podcast videos and doing the same thing. Um, that was going to take a little longer because I have a lot more podcast episodes of my happiness on tap, but now I see how easy it was to make that one little change and I can get through them all pretty quickly. So, you know, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to me. I hope that this video provides you some value so that you see that, you know, it is okay to pivot. It is something we should be able to do. It is something as an entrepreneur, we should do. We should always be you know, looking at our analytics enough to understand where we need to pivot. We should be looking at, you know, what is not working. And actually, as I'm saying all of this wonderful stuff, I realized I didn't even cover number three and the whole purpose of why I made this video. So number three is then what? I've done all these things. I've made these edits. I've learned some new SEO tricks. Um, but now what? You know, what's next? Or why did I want to do this video? Because the answer to the question is why pivot? Or then what? What did I learn by pivoting? This is what I learned. And here's the goal. As an entrepreneur and as a life coach, as I've mentioned before, I'm only 20 months in to my business and it's a struggle. It's not easy. It's not easy getting clients. Um, you know, you kind of go into it thinking one thing and again, kind of being disappointed, but I am not willing to give up. I am going to keep doing what I'm doing because I know that I can help people with my knowledge, my education, my past, my experiences, 
how I overcame my limiting beliefs, how I reduced my anxiety, how I reduced my depression. I know that I can help somebody else. And so I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. It's This isn't a hobby. This is a full-time career for me. So, you know, the, the gold of it all was I made these pivots. I started on M March 11th when I made the decision to pivot away from social media and putting all my focus on everybody else and their business and started focusing on me and my business and my website. And today is March 19th. And in those few days, I have picked up two clients. And I always, you know, when I start with a new client and I have that initial conversation, that initial free consultation with somebody, I always ask, how did you find me? And I keep record of that information so that I know. And I will tell you right now, out of all the clients I've had, um, none of them have come to me from Facebook or Instagram. All of my clients have come to me either from my podcast, from Google, or from some other kind person sharing one of my blog posts out in one of their private groups on Facebook. Um, so I focus on that information. Like, how did people find me? And where am I putting my energy? And where am I not? And so to me, you know, when I sat down and started looking at my analytics and considering those things and asking those valuable questions of my two new clients, the answers were the same. I found you on Google. I found you on Google. You were exactly what I was looking for. That told me that this pivot was exactly what I needed and that the universe was listening to me. I was putting in the effort, I was focusing on my business and she's listening. So just like that, you know, I, I pivoted, I'm doing the work um, and I will continue to be fluid and hopefully I'm providing the right amount of value. Um, like I said, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my website. That way you're kept up to date as I grow, because that's my purpose. I want to share with you the things that I'm learning so that hopefully it can save you time and money and energy. And you can do these things yourself and not be paying somebody else to do it. Or if you're paying somebody else, great. Someday I'll get there. But right now, I am still struggling to build my business. So I don't have a lot of money to be paying somebody else to help me get there. And then I'm not learning anything. I would rather learn and grow. So thank you for joining me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I look forward to my next video with you all.